Please be seated. Let me invite everyone to hear these words from Holy Scripture. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, we gather in the presence of God today to give thanks. To give thanks for the gift of marriage. To give thanks for two particular gifts named Michael and Danette. And to witness their joining together, surrounding them with our prayers and our blessings. And to ask God's blessing upon them so that their love for one another and for God might be nurtured and might grow. God gave us the gift of marriage so that two people may help and comfort one another, living faithfully in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as you shall live. God gave us marriage for the full expression of love between two people. In this marriage, Danette and Michael will belong to each other, freely giving of themselves, expressing affection and tenderness as best they know how. We rejoice, therefore, in this day and in these gifts, and we give thanks to God for the joy and promise, not only of today, but of Michael and Annette's new life together. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are always faithful in your love for us. Look with mercy upon Michael and Annette, who have come seeking your blessing. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them so that with steadfast love they may honor the promises they make on this day. Amen. Amen. Danette, understanding that God has created and ordered and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter into this covenant? If so, would you please say, I do. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Michael, I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> Under. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Understanding that God created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of the marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention? to enter into this covenant, and so would you say, I do. You better believe the good Lord knows I do. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to invite at this time for the families of Michael and Danette to stand, please. We're going to have a moment where you get to affirm as well the wonderful blessing we are experiencing today. Do each of you give your blessing to Danette and Michael and promise to do everything in your power to uphold them in their marriage? If so, would you say, we do? We do. <laughs> Thank you, and you may be seated. I would like to say a very special thank you to a couple of folks today. First of all, Ben, thank you for your gracious hospitality and allowing me in this beautiful church and to be a part of this time of worship together. I am very grateful. And obviously to Michael and Danette, your friendship, and the joy that this day brings to all of us. Technology allows a lot of people all over the world to be able to experience this worship service right now. And so I think of live streaming, but I also think of who else is a part of this worship experience today. Danette, your father, Vaughn, and Michael, your parents, George, and Miss Polly. I can't wait to especially meet Miss Polly one day. I think that's going to be a beautiful experience. We are so grateful for their part in this journey and the experience we are having today as well. In terms of scripture choices today, I tried my best not to choose 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> I tried, but I could not resist, and I actually was talking to a group of elderly folks the other day about this very passage, and one just yelled out, it's the great love story, and I said, yes, in fact, it is the great love passage, and I would like to share it with us all 
these familiar words. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. See why I couldn't resist? That is the most beautiful definition ever. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It doesn't keep score. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. And now there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So I watched a movie not long ago that was the title of a book I had read several years earlier and it was called The Choice. I had to remind myself about some of the details of the movie, but it really didn't matter in the end because it was the title that really grasped me because I knew this day was coming. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that life is filled with so many choices and so many intersections? And folks, I know many of you have heard this story a hundred times, but I could not do this moment without recapping it once again. I was at a baseball game with Michael and decided to show him a picture. He liked the picture. I was in the parking lot of a restaurant here in Greenville with Danette, and she said to me, you look like you have something on your mind, and I was trying to decide whether to mind my own business or introduce her to someone. <laughs> I decided not to mind my own business. And I introduced them by text that day, and they met later. Michael texted me at midnight. Per Ben's instructions, I cannot tell you what that text said. <laughs> but I will, be, I will be happy to share it with you after the service. <laughs> Needless to say, he was pleased. And we have before us a beautiful love story that has lived itself out to this point. And we all look forward to seeing it continue to live itself out before us. I chose this passage. It is the great love chapter, but I love how the simplicity and profoundness of Scripture both embrace us. John 3, 16, for example, we all learned in Bible school very early. The most simple verse in all of Scripture, maybe? No, I don't think so. I think it may be the most profound verse in all of Scripture. And the great love chapter is more than just about Michael and Danette and all of the many great love stories that may be a part of this congregation today as we worship. The great love chapter reminds us, as this, so, this beautiful couple would challenge us all, that it's about who we are as a society. It's about who we are as a church. It's about how we reflect upon each other and how we treat each other and how we embrace each other and we accept each other that God loves even those who disagree with us sometimes. And he embraces us. 
And so we celebrate the great love chapter because it, in fact, is the great love, in my opinion, challenge to all of us. I want us to grasp this gift that I know both of these well enough to know that they want you to embrace for yourselves as we are challenged at the ch as the church in this love celebration to understand the title of the sermon I once preached, love is a verb. It's an action word. It's not, what, it's not just what we say to each other. It's how we treat each other. And it's how we behave with each other. And it's how we love and encourage each other. Folks, I don't have to tell you, this is a beautiful couple standing here before us. <laughs> These are beautiful folks. But I have listened for hours over the last few months to each of them. Michael will acknowledge his attraction to Danette, and Danette will acknowledge her attraction to Michael. But you know the words I hear over and over again are the words kindness and generosity and depth. All of the things, once again, that challenge us as the church of Jesus Christ. Michael and Danette, it's been somewhat of a whirlwind. And tomorrow, by the way, is his birthday. <laughs> I called him a couple of days ago and I said, you were so kind to me on my birthday, I would like to take you out for a very special birthday breakfast on your birthday. And as gracious as he is, he said, oh, you are so... And then he stopped. Going to have to take a rain check on that, Tony. <laughs> we're not going. I thank you both for the honor of experiencing this day and this time of worship with you. You folks have something that is as beautiful and strong as anything I have ever witnessed. Now there will inevitably be obstacles, difficulties. When that happens, I would suggest you take a deep breath, look deep into each other's eyes, and remember the commitment that you are making today not only with each other, but in front of God and this company. And there will be nothing that can break the bond of your love. You are embraced by God's love. You are surrounded by love in this beautiful sanctuary. Michael, my dear friend and brother. Danette, my dear friend and sister blessings on your journey which is going to be beautiful I love you both you too. Amen. Amen I'll let them join the kids Michael please repeat after me I Michael take you Danette I Michael take you Danette to be my wife to be my wife and I promise and I promise to be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Danette, please repeat after me. Mm -hmm. I, Danette, take you, Michael. I, Danette, take you, Michael. To be my husband. To be my husband. <laughs> and I promise. And I promise. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. May I have the rings that are a sign of the promise. Let us pray. By your blessing, gracious God, may these rings be to Danette and Michael symbols of unending love and faithfulness, reminding them of the covenant that they have made with one another and with you on this day. Amen. Amen. Michael, please take Danette's ring. Place it on her finger. That's the right one. <laughs> and repeat after me. 
Danette, I give you this ring. Danette, I give you this ring. As a sign of our covenant. As a sign of our covenant. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Danette, please take Michael's ring. Place it on his finger. And repeat after me. Michael, I give you this ring. Michael, I give you this ring. As a sign of our covenant. As a sign of our covenant. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Before God and this entire assembly, Michael and Danette have made their solemn vows to each other. They have confirmed their promises by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. Therefore, I proclaim that they are now husband and wife. Let us pray. Let us pray. Eternal God, without your grace and strength, no promise we make is sure. So we give you thanks today that we are surrounded by your grace and upheld by your strength. We pray, O oh God, that you would give every good gift and an abundance of your blessings to Michael and to, Net, to Danette in their marriage. Grant them wisdom and devotion in their common life so that they may be to each other a strength in times of need, a comfort in times of sorrow, and a companion in times of joy. Keep them faithful to each other and to you. Fill them, O God, with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome for all who enter into it. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into God's world in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. I now introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Michael Cogdill. Michael, you may kiss your bride. Oh, I thought you'd never. <laughs>